indices by default will be always be 0, 1, and 2. And similarly, if you want to select multiple columns, you can simply pass the list of the names of the columns that you want to fetch. And any guesses what the structure will be there? Exactly, like easy, right? So easy. <laughs> so yeah, it will be a frame, and if you want to fetch a row, you can just simply pass a index of the row. We just pass the index of the row to the location map, which is LOC, and it will give you another series. But as you can see, the indices now are changed. Indices will be the column names now, because in this case, when we fetch a row, the data is really x, 6, and true in this case. And the indices will be the names of the column, because those are the identifiers for any value. So now if we want to fetch the, like the multiple rows, what we can do is just do it the Pythonic way. Just mention the, whichever rows we want, and it will, of course, fetch the zero, zero, ten, first row, like this. So that was just like when you know that what you're going to fetch. But what about if you have some conditions, like if you want to fetch some data based on the value in some column, then you can just do this. So in the square brackets, just mention the condition that you have, and easy to guess that it be a data frame. It will just return those rows which satisfy the condition. The condition can be on any number of columns, as we can see the like sort of a complicated example, which is let's say we want to let's say a hypothetical condition we want to fetch the rows which have x or z value in their first column. We can do this. Like it can be any sort of complicated uh, condition, and it will just fetch according to your condition. In this case, this. So let's say we have uh, these two data frames now. Uh, as you can see, there are A, B, C, and D indices for the first one, and A, B, C, and C columns, and the second one, A, B, C, D, E uh, as indices, and A, B as columns. So. If we decide to merge these, if we decide to add these, which is like addition operation, not exactly arithmetic, but we'll see how it is not exactly arithmetic. Um, it will return you this. So as you can see, some of the values are some of uh, corresponding values in both the data frames. But some of them are not defined, which is like a not a number, which is a none type in NumPy, and which it is a sort of port to uh, pun because it relies on NumPy. Um, so why is uh, why are some values uh, not a number? The reason is, for example, for e row, uh, for e um, index, there's no value in the first data frame, so it doesn't know what value to add, what value to fetch, and that's why it cannot, cannot perform. Uh, uh, can perform an addition operation or a merge operation on uh, E. So that's why all the elements of E in the resultant uh, data frame will be not a number. And the same is the case with the C column as well. So we see a lot of uh, not a number values, right? Uh, how can we handle it? Like if, if we code every day, right? So we know if something goes wrong, either we like, Draw it, either we like eliminate the risk, eliminate the bug, or we fix it, right? It's like as simple as that. So let's see how we can handle these missing values. We can either drop them, either we can like say, okay, if anything is not a number, we don't want to keep it, or we can just say that if anything is not a number, we are going to fill it with some value and on the basis of some logic. So let's say the first thing, like if you want to drop the values, you can just pass on the method like drop NA, and by default it's going to drop all the rows which have at least one not a number value. So which has at least one undefined value, it's going to drop all those rows, as we can see this. And there may be a case when you want to say like, okay, second row, like the index two row, has some values, has some data, so you want to keep it, because it has some data and we're not going to lose it. For that, we have another method which is like you can pass the parameter saying like how do you want to drop the values? You want to drop the values only if all of the values are unfined. So it will just drop the last row. So it's not going to lose like it's going, you're not going to lose any data which you are losing in the first case. And let's talk about another case like when you fill the values in some manner. So we have this uh, data frame again. 
And what we can do is we can just pass a default value which we want to like, this is like one case when you know that if there is something undefined, you want to fill it, fill with something like let's say zero or minus one or something, which is like the default value for your data. And it will just simply replace every not defined value with that uh, default value that you pass. And if you don't really want to do that, like if you, you're like, no, uh, why should I fill with zero? Fine. You can use fill na method which with the with the parameter which is like forward fill, f fill is for forward fill, and what it will do is it will take the value just above the not defined value and copy it all over. So as you can see, in the second row there was a not defined, like not a number, but now it is 10 because the 10 is copied from the last defined value. And similarly, you have uh, backward fill methods as well, and just like pass the method equal to b fill and should be fine. And yeah, so this was a case when it just copied over everything, right? But there may be a case when you just want to copy once, like or copy twice, and you know that if something is really wrong, then you want to drop all the rest of the values, but you want to surely want to copy some of the values, so you can define the limit. And since the limit is one in this case, you can see one uh, not did not a num value is still left because, of course, because of this one limit and it won't copy more than once. Let's talk about indexing now. Like I've talked about indices like we have 0, 1, 2, or we have ABC, we can have custom indices. Let's talk about a little bit more in, in detail about that. So for this data frame, we have <coughs> this index and we can just fetch the index if we want to like do something the index. Uh, in this case, it's not really going to be useful, but as we can see, uh, we'll see uh, later, we, it will be really like indices can be anything and this is a way to access any index of the data frame. So let's say we have uh, this data frame once again and what we want to do is we want to change the index and we want to assign some column as index, like we want to use one column as index, like just like we use in like databases, we define uh, some 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 column as an index, and so that searching is easy and everything is uh, searching and sorting everything easy. So we can do the same thing here. We can just pass the name of the index that we want, and as you can see, the new data frame that we will have will have that column as an index. So everything you are doing using the index now will can be done using these values A, B, C, and D. Let's see how we can do that. So same thing, we want to fetch a row. We can just pass the name of the row, which is now like a character A, because it's the content of the uh, index, so it's like zeroth index in this case, and you will get this. You will get a list. Values are, of course, only six and true because A is included in the index now. And yeah, the columns will again become the index as we saw earlier as well. And you can do this as well. You can just, if you still want to uh, go with the row number, like zero based index, you can still do the i location, which is i log, and you can use that for uh, doing the indexes, doing the fetching the rows uh, as you were doing earlier. So, Let's talk about like, if you want to have multiple indexes, like multiple level indices. So what I've done in this case is I set the index and let's uh, see the result first. So I, what I do is I pass the list of uh, indices, which is one, one, two, two. So what that means is whatever my current index is, assign one and one to the first two elements in the indices and two and two to the other twos. So that means it will create a multi-level uh, data frame, multi-level indexing the data frame, and one is going to be the so sort of a parent index for A and B, and two is going to be the same for C and D. So once we have this like multi-level uh, uh, multi hierarchy, let's see how we can perform some of the operations again. Again, we want to fetch two rows. We, let's say we want to fetch all the rows which are under one index. We can simply do this as we were doing earlier. And it will give us that frame because that's a, a structure for uh, the data that we want because there are multiple rows. And if you just want to fetch still one row, we can still do that, but what we need to do is we need to make sure that we traverse from one to A. 
So we'll simply pass a list of uh, all the indices, the, the uh, sort of uh, hierarchy that we want to pass on, and it will just return list again. Uh, we have another thing which is like transposing data, which is really useful when we are operating on like some uh, matrix operations or something. And as you can see in this case, indices were one, two, and then the next level was A, B, C, and D. But now we have the same level of uh, hierarchy in the column names. So the column names of bar and bars become uh, the indices, and now index is not multi level anymore, and it's uh, just one level and the column names, uh, column structure is uh, multi-level now. So that was uh, just about like manipulating data and manipulating uh, like rows and fetching rows that uh, may have seemed really simple, but it's not that, like pandas, it's not like just for that. It's also for all the statistics, all the, any, any statistic operation that you may want. So for example, this describe method, it is uh, just like as it says, describe. So it will return you a lot of uh, useful information about your data, like the statistical uh, information. Like it will tell you like average, minimum, maximum, first quartile, second and third, um, bunch of things like this. So. This is a useful method for finding any information about your data, like when you're like, okay, just have a glance about your data, like what's, uh, what's there, what's information uh, in the, your data. There's another method for finding the covariance between different columns or between different, uh, uh, different aspects of your data. And there's also this method for finding the correlation easily. And there are a bunch of other methods for finding the rank, like if you have some value in the column and you want to fetch, uh, if you want to find the rank of that, uh, that value in the column, you can do easily do that, like what exactly the rank of this value for all the values in the column. And you also have this, uh, another method for finding the cumul cumulative uh, sum of all the values in one column. Um, yeah. Okay, so now comes the most difficult part. That's a live demo. Let's, uh, let's hope it works. Yeah. Is it, is it visible at the last line? Yeah? Okay, cool. So, how many of uh, you are like football fans here? Do we have any football fans? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so the data that I fetched today is uh, the number of goals scored by Messi and Ronaldo in the last 10 years. And we're going to analyze that data and to see how we can make uh, some sense of that data that we have. So. I will go ahead and just import the library. And this is a data frame. This is like, I actually construct the data frame from a dictionary. It may be fetched from anywhere, like maybe come from some, uh, fetching the data from some tapping or some uh, database or any, anywhere. And so once I build the uh, data frame, if I try to print it, what it looks like, you may find it familiar now because that's how it looks like. In my, it looked like in my slides as well. Um, so it's, it, it has one row, like for each year, it has one row, and it shows the number of goals scored by Messi and Ronaldo for that one year. Let's uh, see what we can do. So since we want to, since we know that if we make the index as year, then we know that we can easily fetch the number of goals scored by any one of the players in that one year. So that's why I've uh, created another index, which is uh, the entry column, which is year. And now let's see how we can operate some of the operations to find, uh, like to make more sense of this data and to see which one, which player is better. So if you want to fetch the, all the goals scored by Messi, all the, like, all the performance of Messi in the last 10 years, we can simply, like, just, is it as simple as accessing one column? We can just simply do that. And if you want to find the one row, like if you want to find in 2016, how many goals were scored by each of the pairs? You can simply do that, like it's so easy. And if we want to find all the, all the, like, all the entries when Messi scored less than Ronaldo, you can find all those years. And we, as we can see, there, there were only six years when uh, Ronaldo scored more. Like not only, but yeah. So this is, this is another useful method which gives you information about your data and it clearly shows that it's a, it's a Python class, a data frame, 
uh, you can see the entries are in uh, integers, 10 entries, 2017 to, uh, 2007 to 16, and data columns are only two, Messi and not null uh, integer values, and same for Ronaldo, and uh, it also shows like some odd 250 bytes, like, who cares? Oh, maybe care, but not really. <laughs> so if we want to find the head, like we want to just see uh, how the data looks, we can simply just pass the head and number of values that we want to fetch, and it will just show, show you sort of uh, uh, snapshot the uh, data, uh, data frame, how it looks like. And same thing is if you want to see from the tail, uh, you can mention the number of elements that you want to see. And both head and tail, if you don't mention any, any number of elements that you want to see, they are going to show you five elements by default. So this is the method I was talking about. Describe. So it gives you a bunch of uh, statistical uh, parameters, like you can see the count, which is not really that useful in this case. Um, mean, uh, standard deviation, we, you can see the minimum, 25 percentile, 50 percentile, 75 percentile, and the max value. So, yeah, there are a bunch of other methods which are like uh, finding the covariance between these two players which is like not really useful in this case, but it may be useful if you're like uh, operating on some data which really need to, in which you really need to find like how, uh, like what the, what's the covariance between uh, some variables or you want to see something like that and you can really uh, do that. And there's another thing which is like correlation. In this case, the correlation won't be really too much because there are like independent players and they don't like, they don't play like that will scoring more and I'm going to score more as well. So there's not going to be much correlation. And we also have this sum. Okay, this one is interesting. So as we can see, Messi has scored more goals than Ronaldo. I'm not saying that, data is saying that. So don't blame me if you are like a Ronaldo fan and you're saying no, it's better. So yeah, just uh, that's what data says and we always go with what data says. Yeah? But I think Messi has bigger uh, standard error equation, so Messi is not reliable. Maybe, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that was coming. <laughs> See, I'm not saying anything, I'm not making a statement here. <laughs> so yeah, uh, there's another method which uh, is coming cumulative sum, and this it really allows us to find the number of goals scored by each player at any moment, like at any point of time, at any uh, years, let's say we want to see like how many goals were scored in uh, 2012, let's say. As you can see, like there were 304 by Messi and 20, no, 270 uh, by Ronaldo. So it's really easy to like make sense of data. This is of course really a small uh, data set, but you can do whatever you can, like you whatever you want, like you can do uh, operations on uh, big data as well. Like, not exactly the big data, but yeah, the data that you can hold in your memory and uh, um, yeah. And yeah, that's uh, all I have for the demo. And no, okay. Anyway, I'm uh, done, yeah, thanks. Uh, we have some questions. No? Yeah? So you have a code. Is it taken? Just to be safe for these elements. No. So data type for each of the element can be anything. Like, it doesn't have to be the same. Yeah, you can mix it, but it's going to be difficult for you if you have to manipulate the data, if you want to like put some condition on that. It's really going to be like you have to check for each value. Like you, let's say you have uh, integers and strings, right? In one column, yeah. You can have that definitely, but when you have the request faster data, you have to recheck like if you are giving some condition, you have to check the type and then compare. So it's really going to be like difficult for you to make sense of the data to analyze the data. And you can find me on all uh, these uh, social links and yeah, reach out to me if you have anything to talk about, anything interesting to talk about. So uh, do we have any questions? Yeah? How big of a data set do we have to have where a question that how big data should be to use partners. It, it, it should be more than one element. That's it. 
Um, that depends on memory, like it, because all the data that it's going to have is going to be in memory. So it just depends on what system you are on and it's really system dependent. So it is like, uh, of course there's going to be complexity thing as well, but uh, that's uh, sort of proportional to what your, uh, how big your data is. Do we have more time? Yeah? Uh, do we have any more questions? Uh, I'm not sure I understand your question. Yes. And then you cut here, and then you transform. Yes. Frame. Yes. And then you have a second, a second um, color to the scriptor. Yeah. I guess there's no function to spread the second color to the scriptor directly. So, add one more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure about that, whether we can, so your question is that whether we can add multiple level columns directly without uh, doing the transpose, right? Uh, I'm not really sure because the library is really big and I'm not aware of all the functions, all the methods, but I'm not really, like, yeah, I'm not really sure I need to check uh, that and see because it's, the library is really huge and I'm not aware of all the methods. Okay. Yeah? Another one? Yeah, you can do that uh, just a similar way as you were doing like for this you, you need to go to from 1 to A, let's say one from 1 to A and you really need to like pass 1 and A and it's going to see like okay this 1 and A are not different ones so it's going from A, uh, from 1 then A and it's going to just return the first uh, column. So it's exactly the same as we saw here. Yeah, it's just like traversing through the hierarchy like just a tree or something like you pass along. Uh, any more questions? Okay, thank you. Don't forget you.